Here's a lesson on how to draw a patch pocket using Adobe Illustrator. A patch pocket is very common detail, design detail found on denim pants especially and non-denim bottoms that have this five pocket styling. So the patch pocket um, detail is looks like this. So it's a patch um, square at the top with a little pointed shape at the bottom with stitching inside. And it's usually commonly found on the back view of you know, pants, skirts, and such. So um, let's get started. So in order to draw a patch pocket shape, I'm gonna not draw on top of any croaky figure or flat at this time, because I can always scale it smaller later on to fit any CAD that I wanna do. But first I'm gonna draw a set, what is gonna be a center front line to reference so that I can make sure that I'm drawing my patch pocket symmetrical from left to right side. Um, so you're just going to draw a solid stroke line using the pen tool. Make sure you have a no fill color and a fill um, pop color. Double click on the um, stroke box and you can pick any pop color in the color picker window. Make sure the little circle appears. You can scroll down, pick whatever color you want, but just don't pick black, all right? Because the patch pocket drawing itself is going to be a black stroke outline. So pick something else that's like a pop color. I picked red and then just hit OK. And we're just going to draw a perfectly straight line using that color and we're going to actually click on it with the black arrow and do an object lock selection. We're going to lock it. We're just using it as a guide. Um, we'll end up deleting it later. So what we're going to draw is a half a pocket shape that looks like this. Um, and then we're just going to copy and paste it and then um, align it and bring it together, join points and make it a full pocket shape. So this is what our pocket shape looks like. Here's our vector points just to show you up close what the vector points are going to be. Um, there's going to be one point here, hold shift, go there, then hold shift, go there, and then an angled line down here at the center. So I'm just going to quickly draw that for everybody. Take the pen tool. Again, check your fill and stroke box. Start at the center front line. Click one point down. Go all the way over. Don't worry how wide it is, but just, you know, because we can always scale it later. Take the pen tool, but it's really important to hold the shift key down because we want a perfectly straight line across that top. And then again, hold the shift key down when you go vertically downward. Um, again, don't worry about the height of the pocket just yet. And now we're not gonna hold the shift key because this line is not perfectly straight. It's angled. We're just gonna bring it slightly angled down like that, okay? And this is our half a pocket shape. You're just gonna copy and paste it. And I'm just gonna delete that because I already have one here. You're gonna copy, mine's actually a little bit more narrow, so if you wanted to bring it in, you can use the black arrow to scale it a little bit more um, narrow width-wise. But again, don't worry, because you can always scale the whole entire pocket at the end. So copy and paste that um, half a drawing, Command-C, Command-V for my Mac users, any of my PC users, instead of the Command key, use Control. Um, and you're just going to object transform reflect, right? Reflect vertical and just hit OK. And that gives us our second half. And I have mine right here. And you're just going to bring the two together. So let me just scroll over here. And I purposely misalign them. So I'm just going to do this first so you can see what the align tool does before we join our shape. Um, you're going to have your two halves. You're going to hold the on the black arrow, you select it and you hold the shift key on both of them. The shift, by holding the shift key, it allows my, the black arrow to select more than one option, as more than one shape at a, at a time. So um, holding the shift key allows me to select both halves at once. Then you're gonna do um, object, I'm sorry, not object, window, align, window align, and you're gonna align to the top or align to the bottom, it doesn't matter. Um, all I need is just a nice flush edge between the two halves to make sure that they are on the same level plane. And then I can get rid of the window align tool and you can see that I already have them aligned here. You're going to have a little gap in between the top and bottom um, of your half a drawing. And I'm actually going to reduce the gap in between the two because it's a little wide on my end. By using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I'm going to use the left arrow and just bring it in a little closer, you guys. So let's just bring that gap a little closer, but whatever you do, do not overlap it because you need to join this shape. So you need to be able to see the gap and make sure that the gap is filled and it's a joined shape. So you're gonna click on um, the two halves, hold the shift key with the black arrow, click on both halves, select them, and you're gonna do an object group. I mean, I'm sorry, right-click join excuse me, right click join. <laughs> um, 
and you're going to do it twice because you're going to need to join both points. There was two points here at the top, two points here at the bottom that needed to be joined. Now, the one thing I will let you know is when you join this little pointed edge of the patch pocket, the one that's a little angled down as a point, what will happen is it's going to create this little flat um, place where the two join points, it's going to create a flat plane. Now that's not accurate to the bottom ed pointed edge of a patch pocket. The pointed edge is truly a point. So you need to take the white arrow now, I'm on the white arrow, and you need to just take that one vector point and move it so that the angled point literally looks like it's a pointed edge instead of a flat plane in that intersection only. Um, that's a minor modifications you need to make be and after you join the shape, the two halves together. Okay, so now once you have a joined shape and a great way to test that is to take the black arrow now and pull it off the red um, center front line we just did. Does the whole pocket shape come together? If it does and it doesn't separate, then you know you've joined your shape properly. So here's my joined shape. I don't need the red stroke outline anymore, so you can pull it off. Um, the red center front line that we did, you can pull it off and just um, start working with it down here. Now you need to add stitching. So here's the stitching we need to add on inside of the pocket. So we're going to just um, add the stitching here. As you can see here, so it's here's my vector points. If I click on the white arrow, you can see I do a perfectly straight, should be perfectly straight, perfectly straight stroke line holding the shift key here, and then I do an angled line straight here. So you just keep on clicking. Click one point with the pen tool. I'm using the pen tool. Click one point, go all the way down, go over, go over, go up. Okay, so once you have that and say it's a solid stroke line, because I'm not drawing this with you. So say if you have this and you drew your inside um, stitch line shape, you go to window stroke right here, window stroke, and this is what the stroke box looks like. Make sure your stroke box is fully extended. If it's not, click on that little button and it will show you all the tools inside stroke box like you see here. And you're gonna click on dash line. That's what gives the look of what's called top stitching. So click on dash line and our dash and gap numbers have been consistently looking good at two point dash with a one point PT gap. And our stroke uh, weight line has been 0 0.5. Sometimes we do 0 2.5, 2 2.5, um, but 0 0.5 is looking good for me on this uh, patch pocket detail. So these are your dash and gap numbers. Sorry to keep on changing, but it is a two point and a one point uh, gap. So here's our dash and gap numbers, and then you also need to add a stitch, single needle stitch going all the way across. And then here, I forgot, here we actually are doing a double needle stitching on the inside and a single needle across. So let's just do a quick copy and paste of that inside stitch line that you did. Bring it and line it up on the inside edge, and you'll notice that it's way wider. It's because you took it from the widest stitch line that you did, you need to take it in and scale it. So you're going to take the black arrow and scale it from the double sided arrow on the side. You can see I'm pulling from here. So you're pulling, pull in and then also notice down here it needs to be pulled up. So you pull up from those double bended arrows and just scale it so it fits inside. And this distance in between each stitching should be pretty consistently the same all the way around. Um, and if it's not, just scale it a little bit um, more away so it looks like it's equidistant. So there's your double needle top stitching and your single needle across the top for the, it, the patch pocket. The next and last step that we need to do is add bar tacks at the top um, corners of the pocket. So for my students that are in my class, you have this um, clip files for catting, zipper stitches, etc. file. You grab this stitch here, just copy and paste it if it's not already pasted into your window and you just go to window brushes and it'll appear right here. And what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna ungroup this CAD for a second so I can do this with you, is we're just gonna draw a little solid stroke line across the top and it's literally the width of the stitching and it starts from the edge of the pocket to the width of the stitching, solid stroke line. And we're just gonna click on it here onto the brush window to our little zigzag, go to window stroke and you're going to change that stroke weight to 0 0.25 and that's a good um, make sure the dash line's not checked because you want to make sure this is this um, zigzag is pretty consistent doesn't have any gaps in it 
like top stitching would. And then once you have a, one bar tack, you copy and paste it and bring it over to the other side here, okay? And that's when you have your completed patch pocket. You can do a window align um, on the bar tacks and make sure they're both at the top corner edges, left and right. And then when you're done your patch pocket, hover over the whole entire thing and do an object group. And you wanna make sure that that's grouped together before you would place it on a garment CAD like this that I have, which is a five pocket pant. And when you, for my students that are doing the five pocket pant, this is the placement that you're gonna put your two patch pockets if you're doing a five pocket short or skirt. Same placement um, here. There usually is a yoke seam with double needle stitching and you place the patch pockets right below the yoke seam and a little away from the center back seam. Now, kind of eyeball the view of where I have it here away from the center back seam and roughly um, the same here on the yoke. But once you have it, and I'm gonna purposely mess this up so you can see, I'm gonna click on one patch pocket using the black arrow, hold shift, click on the other patch pocket using the black arrow so I can select both at the same time. Go to window align, align to the top, and make sure that those patch pockets are level with each other. Um, that's really important that they need to be level on the same plane um, no matter what CAD you're putting them on. And then once you're done, any CAD um, that you're finished, remember to always hover over the whole entire thing, do an object group, so that anytime you need to use your CAD and you need to transfer, transport it to another um, project, you carry it together. For my students that are completing the five pocket assignment, this is what your finished CAD template would look like with your front view on one side on the left, back view on the right. Everything should be grouped, front view grouped, back view grouped, and front and back view listed underneath and your CAD uh, to style description header at the top left hand corner.